In this video, I'm gonna talk about isotretinoin, which was previously known as Ecutane. This is the medication used to treat severe or nodular acne that doesn't improve with any other treatment. I'm your pharmacist, Sidra, your medication expert. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about isotretinoin, all the uses, side effects, interactions, and much more. So stay tuned. Now, Ecutane has been taken off the market because it's got a bad press, I would say, but the generic isotretinoin is still sold and is very, very, uh, I would say, liked by several dermatologists because this medication is literally like the last resort if nothing else works. Now the medication is available uh, under other brand names like Clarivis or um, Amnestine. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna stick with the generic name which is isotretinoin. Now isotretinoin is a form of vitamin A, very effective medication in treating severe acne that have not responded to any other treatment. Now we're talking about acne which are like really bad, like the kind of acne which teenagers get and um, when they get it, they get social anxiety and their mental health is affected because of those kinds of acne, their confidence is shattered and about I would say 50% of people who take this medication experience cleared skin to a point that they never needed and other treatment of acne again. Isn't that amazing? Now, once the acne are gone after using the medication, at that point, you may need to make minor changes in your diet and lifestyle, also maybe in your skincare routine, just to keep the acne from coming back. And mostly, um, you may need to take the medication for up to four to six months to see improvements. Now, after the cycle of this treatment is finished, the pimples rarely come back. And if they do come back at all, you may uh, transition from the oral isotretinoin to the topical uh, medication like maybe retinoids or you can use topical antibiotics to kind of help maintain that clear skin. Now the way isotretinoin works is it basically shrinks the oil or sebaceous glands in your skin. This reduces the oil that is produced and when your skin is not producing excess oil, that means you know there is no excess oil hanging around on your skin to clog those pores and create acne. So basically the way this medication works is that by controlling oil, it controls the acne production. So naturally when you're controlling oil, it's going to cause dryness and dryness not just on your face, but dryness everywhere. Now, because your lips have lots of oil glands, therefore they will become dry first and possibly then other areas of the body will start getting, uh, you know, dry. Therefore, when you are on this medication, hydration is the key. I really, really recommend that um, while you're on the medication, you should be walking around with your water bottle. You should have your lip balm or chapstick in your pocket at all times. That way your lips aren't dry and flaky. Also, your, your skin is not like kind of falling in because it's super dry. So you have to make sure you're well moisturized and you're well hydrated. Now the drying effect of this medication, I wouldn't call it a side effect, it's the way the medication works, is it's kind of too far to an extent that um, it not only dries your skin, but sometimes people expect like a nosebleed with the medication. Uh, if you do happen to get that, uh, don't be super alarmed or panicked. It's an easy fix and a common side effect of the medication. Not one of the reasons why you shouldn't take the medication. But, you know, if you happen to get the nosebleed, uh, just put some Vaseline in the inside of the nose. And the nosebleed basically occurs because the internal side or the mucosa of your nose is basically dry. And if you kind of, you know, put Vaseline, that's going to hydrate the inside of the nose and help prevent the future um, nosebleeds. Another thing to keep in mind with the use of isotretinoin is that it can increase your skin sensitivity to sunlight. So you should wear sun protection, uh, avoid prolonged sun exposure. Generally speaking, if you are out in sun, then you must reapply your sunscreen every two hours. And if you're indoors away from the window, then you may not need the second application. But if you are indoor by the window, 
then definitely reapply the sunscreen and for girls if you are like outdoors and wearing makeup definitely invest in powdered sunscreen because that's gonna be super helpful for the retouches throughout the day another thing to remember is that the medication causes serious birth defects while you're taking it and up to months after you stop using it but it does not really affect the fertility long term but when I say that the medication can cause serious birth defects that means that if you become pregnant while taking this medication there is a strong strong chance that you might lose your baby or there could be serious birth defects for this reason every female who is biologically capable of becoming pregnant must take monthly pregnancy tests and have pregnancy prevention plan in place while taking the medication if you are sexually active then it's important that you use two methods of birth control while on it you also have to sign up on i pledge where you basically take the oath that you won't become pregnant while on this medication there are a couple more things that you need to know about i pledge while you're taking the medication that i'm gonna talk about a little bit later in the video for now i want to talk about isotretinoin and hormones because a lot of people are concerned whether isotretinoin mess up the hormones or not well according to one study conducted in 2011 the medication is found to suppress hormones in the pituitary glands which is actually helpful uh, for treating acne um, and and i guess that's one of the reason why some people notice a thinning or shedding of hair while on the medication however if you have hormonal acne unfortunately the medication does not really help treating those um, for hormonal acne you have to stick with your other medications like some people uh, you know use contraceptives metformin or spironolactone it is totally okay to take those medications in conjunction with isotretinoin it really depends what the treatment plan your uh, dermatologist suggests for you now some people do experience worsening of the acne when they initially start taking the medication this initial flare-up is common but is a totally uh, preventable side effect of the medication basically the more severe inflammatory or i would say widespread your acne are the more common initial flare would be and in that case you must speak to your pharmacist or doctor so an add-on treatment may be recommended because this initial flare-up is totally uh, preventable and treatable uh, many people I've noticed that they don't contact their provider thinking that the initial uh, flare-up is therapeutic and it's basically the acne coming on the surface which is a total misconception that's not the case in fact not treating the initial flare-up may result in just unnecessary breakout and scars now another reason why acne get worse in the first couple months of uh, taking the medication is because when you start taking the isotretinoin a lot of times the dermatologist might recommend discontinuing all other medications and since isotretinoin may take a couple months to kind of show its full effect um, you get a treatment gap in between which again is totally preventable talk to your doctor or pharmacist to see what other medications you can still continue using uh, for instance if you're using spironolactone or if you're using like topical retinoids or topical antibiotics you can still continue those while um, using isotretinoin the only one exception is if you were using uh, antibiotic like uh, tetracycline that must not be used there is a major interaction between tetracyclines and isotretinoin so don't use that but other um, common acne medications can still be used while you're using the isotretinoin all right now let's talk about how to take the medication i would say take the medication with food because food helps with the better absorption of the medication and specifically i would say fatty food because the medication is lipophilic which again it, it works better or it, it absorbs better when taken with high calorie fatty food now that does not mean at all that you start binging on fried chicken and mcdonald's because the medication can elevate the triglyceride levels in about 50% of people and it can also elevate cholesterol in about 40% or 30% of people who take it which by no means I want to scare you off the medication 
and it's totally not any reason to not take the medication as long as you maintain a healthy balanced lifestyle you should be okay also the cholesterol level go back to normal within three months after you stop taking the medication all right so far i've discussed the minor or common things that you need to consider with the use of isotretinoin remember it's a very safe and effective medication but is often reserved as a last resort for acne treatment because the medication honestly has received a bad review or bad press in past and because of that i often encounter patients who tell me that their dermatologist like wanted them to take isotretinoin but they didn't feel safe or they didn't feel good about the medication because the medication has so many side effects and warnings and honestly with so much information out on social media and people a lot of people reach out to google and internet to get their information and not having the authentic resource it is very easy to get scared of the medication but like i said before it is totally safe and effective medication you just have to be cautious of certain things but at the end of the day it's your choice you shouldn't be uh, feeling that you've been forced into this treatment even if you don't feel safe or or good and also it really depends what you're trying to achieve with your acne treatment journey as a pharmacist it's obligatory that i educate you on all the possible and dreadful side effects you may experience for the medication and i don't want to like sugarcoat anything but then it's my job to give you clear facts a lot of times those side effects and warning just exist on paper they are there theoretically for you to have understanding of the medication just in case any of that side effect occurs then you know that it's from the medication there isn't something else going on and should you get those side effects then you can recognize them right away and can kind of address them and discuss with your doctor and pharmacist on how you can combat those side effects and the whole reason I wanted to give that spiel is because isotretinoin is linked to possible mental side effects like a lot of people get depression, um, they also associate the medication with anxiety, suicidal thoughts and psychosis. The link to psychiatric side effects is very very I would say um, controversial and the research on these side effects is still like not very complete and clear but just to be on safe side the mental state of people taking this medication should be closely monitored by doctors parents guardians and should you experience any mood changes or behavioral changes do let your doctor or pharmacist know another thing to keep in mind is if you like to enjoy alcohol then you may have to kind of you know stay away from it or kind of decrease the um, alcohol intake while taking this medication medication because the medication tends to um, cause liver problems I mean if you're enjoying one or two drinks here and there that's fine but if you are a regular alcohol drinker then you know talk to your doctor discuss your options you'll either have to say goodbye to alcohol for a little bit or you can talk to doctor and come up with some other treatment option now going on isotretinoin as a woman I would say is kind of a little bit more complicated and annoying process not just because of the uh, psychological side effects but also like the birth defects and the pregnancy tests and the blood work that you have to do while on the medication since the medication is associated with serious birth defects in order to obtain the prescription you actually have to register on iPledge and the registration on iPledge cannot take place until you've taken the pregnancy test it's come out negative and uh, for women you actually get like a seven day window to pick up the prescription after that and if you miss the seven day window then you literally have to wait like 19 days to get another pregnancy test and the whole cycle kind of repeats so this is why it's very important that the day you uh, take the pregnancy test your provider must register you on the iPledge and then you get like an iPledge uh, REMS number that the provider sends to pharmacy and then if the medication requires like prior authorization because it's not covered on your insurance then that's something the pharmacy must contact your provider right away to get that prior authorization initiated and then often like pharmacy might not have the medication in stock so those are a couple of things like literally after you get the pregnancy test you have to be like on top of your doctor and pharmacy to kind of make sure you get the medication in time so yeah it's kind of annoying to get the 
prescription of isocretinoin as a female and especially if you are in a childbearing age however male patients or the females of non childbearing age the process is pretty simple like you don't even have to call i pledge or you just answer a questionnaire on uh, on i pledge one time and then your provider basically you know will register you you don't have to uh, do the blood work every month uh, the provider will answer your questions on your behalf on i pledge and you actually get a 30-day window to pick up your prescription compared to a short seven-day window for girls of childbearing age now some of the things that you should avoid while taking isotretinoin would be do not take any vitamins or supplements um, that contain vitamin A unless or otherwise you know your doctor has approved you to do so and another thing is that while you're taking uh, this medication and for at least i'd say about six months after you take the last dose do not use uh, vax hair removals or um, you know have a dermabrasion or laser skin treatments because this can actually result in scarring also you want to avoid any tanning beds whether you're a male or female you must not donate blood while taking this medication for at least 30 days after you stop taking it because let's say if uh, the blood you donated end up being uh, given to a pregnant woman then there is a possibility that the child of that pregnant woman might get some uh, birth defects yeah so these were some of the scary i would say um side effects or warnings uh, with the use of isotretinoin in general it is fda approved and has been used pretty much all over the world by millions of people um, it is considered safe and very effective for acne um, except the hormonal acne like i said before uh, the medication i would say is normally started at lower dose to minimize the instant of side effects and then gradually increase until you reach the cumulative dose overall i would say dermatologists are very um comfortable prescribing the med medication but the most important thing is that you have to be comfortable with it um, i tried to provide you generalized information about the medication but at the end of the day you have to weigh your benefits versus risk and then decide whether you want to go this treatment route or not do talk to your dermatologist and discuss whether this is the right medication for you or not if you have any questions or video suggestions write them in the comments and i'll see you next week with another informative topic on health pharmacy and beauty until then take care bye